gonna swim, bike and run in the corner sun. We're gonna swim, bike and run in the corner sun. 2021. Thank you, Poncho Man. Hey, everybody! Welcome back to Versus Bob, not quite Kona edition. We are brought to you by Clash USA, Credo Tri, You Can, Hoka Oni, Oni Velo Fix, Norma Tech. Canyon Bikes and our Challenged Athletes Foundation we just sent out 3,038 grants, totaling $5.1 million to keep challenged athletes in the game of life through sport. Our guest, Mr. Bill Christie and one of the legends of triathlon, Mr. Timothy O'Donnell. How are you doing, Mr. Christie, to start out? Great. Good to be here. You know, I always love it. And my friend Tio's on the line, too. So we're going to have a lot of fun. So when you look back at the COVID time, probably the shining stars from that when it comes to triathlon uh, were Challenged Miami, Challenged Daytona, big prize purses, and those were all under you, Bill. T.O., how important were those events, just to, considering that everything had gone away? I mean, they're important on so many different levels, Bob. Number one, just for the athletes um, to get us out there to – keep our sanity um, and, you know, to put some money in some, some athletes pockets too. Right. But on a much bigger level, we're going to look back at uh, the pandemic and just really in years down the road and, and realize that it was actually a really pivotal point for triathlon uh, as a whole. And with the coverage we got with Daytona and Miami and uh, the way we've just really raised the bar. Um, I think it's going to be a really important point in the history of triathlon when we look back. And one of the things, Tio, that I, that I love about those venues, when you think about the Daytona venue, the Miami venue, is the fact that you can you, you, you have the same vision, I think, that I do. You can look at those things and go, okay, you could be racing all week. These things are totally blocked off, totally safe. This is a multi-sport festival waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. I, I mean – I just envision like college game day, you know, when we get it, when we're coming out of pandemic, like the start of Daytona, it should be like rough and ready to tumble and like a lot of fun. And, and, you know, we're going to get to the point where people who aren't even racing are just going to come out and, and just, you know, camp and tailgate and um, just be there for, you know, just to be part of a really special sporting experience. From an athlete perspective, being, you know, you're, you're, you can look at it and go, wait, I'm going to go in in circles for 50 miles or for 38 miles. Uh, it, this is, this could be, this, this could be pretty boring. It, it certainly was, was way different than that. Right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was quite engaging actually, because you really, you, you knew there were no distractions like intersections or cars or whatnot. And each course, you know, so far with between Daytona and Miami, I've done both. There are a lot of challenges going into the race that you had to prepare for. And the guys have prepared, the best in terms of, Hey, Daytona, you better be on, be ready to sit in your aero bars for, you know, an hour and 40 minutes and never move versus Miami where you better, you better know how to corner and you better know how to handle your bike. There's all these different, uh, unique kind of challenges as you prepare for the event. And I think that's uh, pretty cool too. So Bill, obviously this was your vision is to put triathletes on the racetracks and you've, you've proven your concept. It's phenomenal. But now you're, you're here to announce you've got a new brand. And talk a little bit about the new brand and why you're going that way. You know, this is, uh, this is really an extension of uh, the increase in the size of the team. So with the addition of Philip LaHaye and Andre Lepar, both tenured folks, you know, my charge to them was this is a clean sheet of paper. Um, there are no rules which doesn't surprise either one of you that that would come out of my mouth. Yep. And I said, let's do what nobody has done before. Philip came back after uh, his follow on trip to Watkins Glen from Andre and Philip said, there's so much here. You know, why are we just thinking about swim, bike, run? You know, there's trail here. There's uh, amazing mountain biking here. There's a wine festival here. He said, why are we just thinking about swim, bike, run? He said, we need to think about endurance in general. And as we looked at that, we all sat around and said, okay, we really want to give us what the venues have to offer, right? So there's so many venues out there that can be just so much more than swim, bike, run or run, bike, run. So you've got mountain biking, you've got trail running, you've got middle of the night 
relay races on long distances. Yeah. You've got so much that's there. They said, we got to seize this opportunity. And I said, okay, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Uh, and have, uh, have uh, a good time kickstarting uh, an endurance business. And so Clash is a function of those folks coming out of those venues and saying, let's do it. Let's do it and let's be an endurance company. So it made a lot of sense to us. Uh, Clash makes a lot of sense. You know, it's the, the mind and the body fighting to see who's going to win. Uh, it's the, the clash between athletes and each of these venues, you know, where else in the world can you race? And, uh, you know, Tim sees who he's got to run down in front of him because they're a half a mile ahead as opposed to wondering where they are. Uh, you can see it. So we're going to take the best that every facility has to offer and we're going to make unique uh, decisions around that for endurance. So that's what we were thinking. That was that was the logic behind it. And for so will the next event then will it be kick off with Daytona in, in December? Is that where, where things get going? Daytona in December. So uh, three, four, five. Uh, right behind that's Miami. Same uh, same weekend uh, of the year will be the kickoff to 2022 season. Uh, we go from there from Clash Miami to uh, Clash Watkins Glen, uh, eight, nine, and ten, which is the wine festival. It's is that July, the, Bill? July, that's right, July, and it's the largest wine festival I think in that region of the Northeast United States. He so likes that. Yeah, 30, yeah, yeah that, that's how Bill sold me. Right, <laughs> right. Tim, we're going to race and drink yeah. wine. <laughs> Thirty thousand people inside the race venue. So you'll actually cross the line into a wine festival. I love it. Uh, yeah, so but the, so much to offer. And then um, Road America right after that. That's Atlanta? Uh, Road America in Atlanta, which is going to be our endurance, uh, our endurance festival. So there'll be three different courses for mountain biking. Uh, there'll be a green, green race, a blue race, and a black race, kind of like snow skiing. Uh, there'll be uh, racing at night. Uh, on the track with relays, there'll be a run bike run, a pretty traditional run bike run, um, on and on and on, gravel racing and uh, short and long. Um, we're excited about what Atlanta has to offer because the topography there is as amazing as the topography in uh, at the Glen. And you know how much I love the Glen. Absolutely. So we're excited about that being our kickoff endurance race. So NASCAR Productions. They did such a phenomenal job on the events in Daytona and in Miami. They'll be on board? Oh, absolutely. In fact, they're already, they know the Glen so well, they've already thought about, okay, listen, if we're gonna cut this into zones, you know, here's, here's what we need to do when you start thinking about this. And you know, those folks, they never stop. Uh, I got on a call last week and they were like, yeah, we were talking about you guys and uh, what we're gonna do for Daytona this year and blah, blah, blah. And some of the graphics packages they're gonna add. and. They're, they're pretty excited, but they're absolutely on board. They're, they're with us for a lifetime. And the, one of the big draws of the races, to both Daytona and Miami, was the prize purse and having the top pros in the world and obviously the live television production. All that's still on board? All of it. All of it. Game on. $100,000 for Daytona. Uh, Miami will be $50,000 again. Um, we're doing some stuff for the graphics for the pro athletes to, uh, to engage their sponsors, which I think will be fun through the pointers. Um, and, uh, the enthusiasm through media shows that, you know, we, we proved it. Uh, no people question. like to watch triathlon. It's true. Yeah. What a concept. <laughs> Who would have thought that? So talk Not a little my bit wife. About, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> IMG and NBC. They're, those are partnerships as well. They are. They are. So we've got a relationship uh, with IMG through the next three years uh, contractually, uh, but we're excited to work with them. And they, they have a pretty good time at my behest, I think, uh, because, you know, we sit back and ask silly questions like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, and uh, obviously, NBC has been a great partner and they're really excited about Daytona uh, with everything that's going on over there for them to stay uh, true to us is, is a pretty special thing. So NBC, uh, NASCAR Productions, we're going to take a good run at it and see if we can make a better show in Daytona than uh, Miami was. And then Miami, we've already got some 
fantastic things lined up for what we're going to do there. Come on, share. What, what are you talking about? Share. Boy, that's harsh. Bob, what? You always, Tio, he always puts me on the spot like this. Every time, guaranteed. All right, I'm going to give you, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. The water. Wait, wait, is this going to be one where you'll tell me and then two hours later you'll call me and go, hey, wait, 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 you can't air that. Cut that out. <laughs> Cut that out. You can't say that. Uh, okay, TL, I'll start with a question. What was the water quality like in Miami? Oh, it was amazing. It was beautiful. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, I perfect for me, like perfect temp, no wetsuit, yeah. uh, really like clear, yeah, just crisp, clear water. Yeah. So don't be surprised if I put scuba divers deep in the water. This is a deep, deep uh, spring lake. Don't be surprised if I uh, put scuba divers in the water underneath you and watch, watch the pros swim by. Uh, I think you can bet on that one, Bob. And no, you don't have to cut that out. Okay. All right. We'll leave that there. So, uh, T.O., from your perspective, obviously one of the things that, that has made Iron Man Iron Man has been the NBC coverage over the years. And having that type of coverage and the live stream and the rest of it, were, were you and you the and the fellow pros, what was your response to just how the events were covered, both in Daytona and Miami? Uh, I think, actually, I think a lot of the professionals were pleasantly surprised. Um, yeah, probably actually taken back a little bit that, you know, th this quality event and coverage was put together, um, you know, behind the scenes. A lot of the athletes just showed up and then, you know, then like, oh, wow, this is legit. Like, this is real. Uh, yeah. And I think it we got everybody really excited. And I think you saw that with the response in Miami with athletes, particularly, um, you know, the athletes coming over from Europe. People wanted to come over to the U.S. and race. And there's very few domestic U.S. races where, a lot of international professionals really want to come up, come over, you know, obviously Hawaii is its unique thing, but uh, in terms of the continental U S um, it's exciting to get that, that poll um, from all across the world, wanting to come to the U S and, and race high quality events with amazing coverage. So Bill, the other side of this is one thing to put on a made for TV, great pro race, but one of the things Daytona and Miami had, with the for the age groupers in terms of safe courses in terms of really awesome awards the little helmets were so unique nobody'd ever seen anything like that before talk a little bit about how important the age group component is for you and clash i mean let's be fair that is the uh, that's the core to this business right we're always going to stay true to the core um I, i'm an age group athlete we all know I'm a poor one, but I'm an age group athlete. And, you know, I, I continue to look for experiences where my dream is for people to walk away and say, wow, what an experience. So the athlete experience is everything uh, from the award to crossing the red carpet uh, to having their ability to watch it on live stream, to watch themselves race uh, on our YouTube channel after the fact. So it, it's not any fun without people sitting there creating an energy and a buzz. Um, that's our dream. Uh, it'll continue to be our focus. Uh, we want to have an event for everybody in the family. Uh, we we want to make sure that uh, that my uh, my kids are out there racing and your kids are out there racing uh, and, and provide a, a healthy lifestyle. And the safety factor, you know, is near and dear to my heart. You know that I lost uh, a very dear friend of mine um, because there wasn't enough evac on the course. And uh, I swore to myself I would never race a race uh, or be a part of a race that didn't have uh, not necessarily the right amount, but went overboard on, on protection. So shutting down highways, which uh, we did for the age groupers, uh, shutting down lanes, um, a significant amount of police. You know, my, my favorite memory, and I, I know I should have more of my favorite memory coming out of Miami, was in the kids race, a five-year-old little girl named Bella uh, was the last one out of the water and she had seven lifeguards around her. And <laughs> two were in the water right next to her, you know, saying, move your arms like this, Bella, you're almost done, you're almost done. And the rest of them were all sitting around her, cheering her. And, you know, then I watched her get on her bike and it's got tassels on it, it's got a basket on it. And, you know, it just, what an amazing thing for it to be uh, uh, an all-inclusive family event. But would you let your kids race in a, in a race that wasn't safe? No. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, it, it's important. It, it's really important. I think the athletes and the age groupers really appreciate uh, the effort we go to. I think that's 
I think that's uh, well known. For those who don't know it, know that it comes from the heart. I love the fact that Bella was able to use Tio's bike. Right, he finished his and he, he gave him the one with the tassels in the basket. That My was signature tassels. They're aerodynamic tassels, Bob. <laughs> so, Billy, the other side of this, because you came with, like you said, a blank slate. And you come from NASCAR. And the thing that makes NASCAR so cool, because we were, we were lucky enough to go out there for the 500, it's a whole week. There's stuff happening every single day. And there's people in motorhomes and there's concerts and that's what your vision is that correct you you want people to be coming in a motor home on monday doing a 5k on tuesday and doing a clinic of some sort on wednesday be there for the concert on thursday watch the pro race on friday these things are not going to be one day things correct right all right I, in fact i i listened to the uh I listened to the reel on the cover band that's going to be with us all weekend uh yesterday so pretty excited about the music we're going to have um We've got a we've got a, a, a Zoom call with a bunch of the pros uh, shortly after this airs, and one of the things we're going to talk about is is educational clinics. So you know, Daytona this year, uh, and even with COVID, you know we sold out two of the RV parking lots. I I stay on site uh, in a mobile coach. To has been over for some of our post uh, post race parties. We have a pretty good time. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, you know, the whole thing is, is it, it's a thing, right? It's, it's just what you said. It's a festival. And we want to get better at that and we want to expand on that. So I think the big next component to that besides the entertainment side is to get some of the educational stuff to get the pros that have significant followings and teams and coaching groups, uh, to bring out their folks. Um, especially the number of them that, that race last year. I, I can't even begin to remember how many folks Ben Hoffman had out last year. So get them here. You know, let's do some training. Let's have some fun. Bring an RV. We got plenty of space for you. And uh, there might be a bonfire or a cookout or two that, uh, that you get to come to. So we'd love that. The one part of the Daytona weekend that I was incredibly impressed with is the day after the race, you had a media training with the folks from NASCAR, which I thought, I'd never seen that before. I'm sure T.O. has over the years, but I'd never seen anything like that. And I thought it was phenomenal. I certainly learned a lot. Uh, is that something you'll be doing more of, Bill? We will, and I'd, I'd like for T.O. to talk a little bit about that because I think he's a little more engaged in that than uh, than most, so. I'll yeah, it. I mean, it's it's been amazing. I've actually been working with, you know, Bill's PR and media team, um, you know, since Miami and um, it's, a resource that as an athlete I've never really had access to, but, you know, we had a meeting, um, after the race in Daytona, um, you know, with the media team and it takes a lot to get a pro athlete to do anything after a race <laughs> <laughs> and the room was filled. Like yeah. it was, I was, I was impressed. I, I thought there might be, you know, four or five people there. Right. But the room was filled. So, uh, I think that's, you know, a great sign for the athletes. And, you know, actually, I wanted to bring up another thing about the venues, too. When I went to Daytona and Miami, of course, these, you know, these areas are ready for large amounts of people, right? So you're yeah. going to events where everything's easy. The logistics are super easy. Restaurants, hotels, uh, grocery stores, everything's right where you need it. Um, you know, I stayed at one Daytona Plaza last year. and I, I never had to get in my car, you know, like I just walk everywhere I needed to go. And I think that's really important when you're bringing your crew and your, your family and things like that, that everything is easy um, for your support team. The other thing that's, that I see, Bill, and I don't know if you guys have thought about this at all, but when you think about the world of ultra, right, ultra running, most of the time you're out in the middle of nowhere, right? You're trying to get internet, well, even something like St. George, the internet there is so bad. When you're up in the canyon there, you really can't get coverage. You're at the racetrack. You got coverage. You got the best, your best. A little bit of Wi-Fi. You got, you, yeah, you don't have to worry about Wi-Fi. You've got lights. You've got all that. You could be doing 50-mile runs. You could be doing relays. There, there really isn't any limit to what you can be doing out there. You know, every time I turn around we have one of these conversations, I make a note saying, ooh, ultra relay, Bob. <laughs> Uh, so, and, and we had talked about this before. So Atlanta, there will be a, uh, a team sport relay, uh, that's a 60 miler that I think starts at about 10 o'clock at night. Uh, that's obviously right there. 
So you're safe and, and rather than having to live in the back of a vehicle, you get to run back to your mobile coach and, and uh, relax and have a bonfire and eat a meal until you're up to race again. So yeah, it's, uh, we are really excited about doing that both trail and on the track because of the safety and our ability to control it and not have to worry about anything, which we also think the, the night component ought to be pretty fun. So, uh, I mean, I've, I've raced in, in, in late at night before with a headlight on and I, I've gotten lost. So <laughs> I think this will be a good time. So Tio, since you've been in this sport for, for quite a while, it used to be you were a pro athlete and everything was based on uh, how did you perform, period, end of story. Now it's your social media, the fact that you guys have your own TV show, uh, your own online show. Talk about how life has changed as a pro athlete because it's more than just train, race, recover. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, actually, Rennie and I joke all the time that we signed up to be pro athletes and now we're just social media influencers. But uh, it's been <laughs> got to you got to go with the times, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, literally, like when we started, you know, when we were first starting out, like your sponsor obligation was maybe an appearance at an event or um, hopefully like a photo shoot or you get a cover, you know, you get a cover of Triathlete or whatever magazine inside Triathlon. Yes. And now it's so much. Uh, what do you? you know, what content are you driving on your own end? Um, and that's a lot for the athletes to manage. So to have, you know, events that are, you know, able to help us drive that content with, you know, television coverage and, uh, you know, photo, um, actually getting photos and stuff from the race. It's, it's pretty important because it's a hard balance to perform. And at the end of the day, you need to win races, but you still have to have that presence. So any help we can get with kind of generating that presence and being relevant is, is very important. It's going to be fun this year to go back, Bob, to the autograph sessions where we did the, uh, the pro autograph card. Yep. That'll be fun. Uh, you know, the, the pro-am that we did to engage the pros with the age groupers uh, as well is a lot of fun. Um, now that we're, we're down the road with, uh, with the health issues that are out there, you know, that stuff will come back. Um, but I, I will say to, to watch the engagement and the enthusiasm, the energy in the fan zones during autograph sessions was, was really incredible and it adds to that content. Uh, so it's naturally driven content that we're able to capture because of the facilities um, that's real and it's genuine and it's not staged and it's fun. So hopefully that helps. For, for people, people have seen Daytona and people have seen Miami and uh, even though there's obviously technical parts of Miami course, Watkins Glen is a different animal. Can you tell our people what <laughs> Watkins, because people think, oh, it's just a racetrack. And no, Watkins Glen is a different animal, correct? It is, it is. Watkins Glen has, uh, it's an old F1 track uh, that makes it pretty good in size, about 363, I think. Don't hold me to that. I'm sure Lindsay, she's in the booth next to me and I'm, Sure, she's going to throw things at me when I walk out of here about the distance. Um, but when the team came out of there, they said, "Look, technically speaking, you know the turns, the elevation changes, uh, the climbs. Um, it's going to be a very different animal. It is going to be, you know, to give you an example, we were in Watkins Glen January of last year doing our first site vit visit." And town was cold, but then we went up to the Glen, there were three feet of snow on the ground. So the, uh, and I, I won't give away too much, but the first part of the course is, uh, the first couple miles is flat coming out of the water, and then you've got a pretty significant climb right off the bat. So it's, it's real. Um, the, the track is spectacular. Um, we're excited about the topography. I think the topography on Watkins Glen and the fact that it is that wide a, a track uh, is what's so cool about and what makes it special as a facility by itself. So is the, uh, if people go to the website now, is everything live in terms of all the events or when will everything go live? By the time this shows, it'll be live. We'll be up, we'll be running. It'll be one site for all the races, uh, clash-usa.com. Um, and that'll show all four of next year's races. It'll give details. Uh, registration transfers to Daytona automatically, and I think registration um, goes up shortly thereafter for uh, the Glen Miami 
uh, and uh, Atlanta. I think that rollout is is pretty quick. It's pretty fun. Isn't it fun, Tio, seeing new stuff come into our world? I mean, we've all had we've all seen events come and go, but having something like this that looks like one, it's got staying power, and I, and knowing Bill, we're, he this is the tip of the iceberg. How, how many events, Bill, do you think you're going to see have? In you know, like if we're talking three years from now, how many events are we talking about? Tio, guess. You got a guess? Um, I'm going to say double digits. Double digits, 15. 15. 15. Oh, yeah, 15 is <laughs> the goal. And well, and <laughs> I actually got a little more aggressive with that. And God love uh, Andre Lepar and Philip LaHaye. And they said, look, this is a quality event. People love, you know, people love the experience. Don't get crazy. Uh, you know, now that we've opened up the endurance thing because it's given us venues that we, we hadn't even looked at before. Right. The team's looking at saying, you got to be kidding me. So, yeah, 15. I love it. Hey, thanks, boys, for, for taking time. I'm very, very excited, obviously, about the multi-sport festivals and bands and triathlon and ultra racing and mountain bike. This is going to be pretty damn spectacular. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, T.O. Uh, T.O.'s always on the cutting edge. Anything that's new. Tio, Tio's out there. Love that yeah. happening, guys. Appreciate it, my friend. Tio, always, always a joy, man. Oh, thanks, Bill. Thanks, guys. All right. Bill Christie and Timothy O'Donnell have been our guests. Again, the launch of Clash USA. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. See ya.